Can you identify an airplane at a glance when it's in the air flying at 200 miles or more an hour? Well, it's not an easy job, but as the days go by, it will be a necessary job. That's the way Terry and Pat Ryan feel about it. And that's why they're going to teach the Chinese commandos how to spot planes. The lives of one and all may depend on a soldier's or a civilian's ability to recognize a plane instantly. In today's transcribed adventure, we'll see what steps Terry has taken to help this commando outfit in the business of aircraft spotting. Terry and the Pirates is brought to you by the makers of Libby Tomato Juice, one of Libby's hundred famous foods. These days, everybody's asking himself, what can I do to help win the war? Well, there are at least two very important things that every one of us can do. One is to buy war savings bonds and stamps. You know, you can get a savings stamp for only ten cents, and every cent you buy is a step toward victory. The other thing that every one of us should do is to try to keep well and strong. And that means, among other things, that you should eat correctly. You should get plenty of protective foods, foods like Libby's tomato juice. Libby's tomato juice is grand because it's such a wonderful source of vitamins, and it's grand for flavor, too. It's gloriously refreshing with the rich goodness of sun-ripe tomatoes. Yes, you can taste all that, but you can't taste the vitamins. They're there just the same, though, lots of them. Libby's tomato juice is an excellent source of vitamin C and of vitamin A, and it also contains vitamin B1 and vitamin G. And Libby packs many other delicious foods that have a whole lot to contribute. Food authorities say we should eat fruit daily. Libby brings you peaches, pears, fruit cocktail, plums, lots of marvelous tasting fruits. And meats, too, and vegetables. Your mother can be sure of getting extra good things to eat whenever she buys a food that's labeled Libby. And now, Terry and the Pirates. <laughs> Terry and Pat and the Dragon Lady are garrisoned with the 1st Chinese Commando Group. Their headquarters are in a secret valley in the Sansoon Hills, not far from the invaders' line. Pat is their commanding officer. Terry is messenger. And the Dragon Lady, because she knows the territory and the enemy, plans the daring commando raid. But the commandos have never been instructed in spotting aircraft. So Terry is set about the job of teaching them. Unable and unwilling to use a book which is difficult and slow, Terry has hit upon a great idea. He has called a squad of commandos to the large shack and is giving them their first lesson. He holds his airplane spotter device, two large cardboard discs. As he faces the men, he says, Now then, you've all had a chance to study the different planes on this large cardboard circular disc. You know that every plane has a different shape, wing, and tail. Now then, we're going to have a game, a contest. Pat, did you explain about the reward? Yeah, but I'll explain again. Now, man, I'm going to need a top sergeant. I've asked the dragon lady to choose a man from among you, but she refused. She says you're all good soldiers. You've all had equal experience. So it remains for me to select a man for the job. I've decided to make the winner of this airplane spotting contest my sergeant. That's fair, I'm sure. Now, go ahead, Terry. All right. I'm going to fasten this disc, the one with the airplanes on it. I'm going to fasten it behind this other cardboard circle. Now, all you can see is one plane at a time through this small opening up there in this cardboard. Now, I'll spin the airplane disc like this. And when it stops, the plane will show in the opening. Like this. What plane is it? Put your hands up. Chi Hao? What is it? Uh, it is enemy airplane. That's right, Chi Hao. What kind? Oh, is not there. Uh, it's an invader plane, a Mitsubishi Type 93. It has a rugged, angular appearance. It has a twin engine. It has double fins and rudders. It's a low-wing monoplane. Remember, it's general shape. I try again, please. Now, we'll let Wing Ho take a shot at spot. I'll spin the disc, so. What plane is that? Oh, uh, sir. Fire, fire, fire. That's right, Wing Ho. It's a flying fortress, easy to identify. A long-range heavy bomber, low-wing monoplane, four engines. You can see how they're arranged. Well, uh, let's give somebody else a chance. If you guess wrong, you're eliminated. And we'll keep at it until there are only two men left. Quiet a minute, fellas. Quiet. 
We're on the last lap. Everybody's been eliminated but Wing Ho and Wang. Between them, which one will win in the spotting contest? The winner will get the job as Commander Ryan's top sergeant. Say, this is getting exciting, Jerry. Both boys have called them right each time you whirl that disc. Suppose we come out even, then what? Well, there's 16 planes on this disc. Maybe one of them will make a mistake. We'll see. Okay, this is the payoff. <laughs> Wing Ho, it's your turn. Quiet man to the chest. Okay, now spin the disc and let's see what plane comes up. What is it, Wing Ho? Uh, 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 you mean Hawker Hurricane? Yes, so. How can you tell for sure? Uh, uh, Correct. The radiator of a Hawker Hurricane projects on the floor. Okay, Wang, it's your turn. I'll spin the cardboard and we see in the opening. What plane is it, Wang? Uh, uh, right. It's the Hawker Hurricane again. All right, I'll spin the card again. And now what plane flies into the open spot? Uh, Wildcat. <laughs> He's right, Terry. It's the Grumman Navy Wildcat. Wildcat, Wang, not wild kitten. This plane's thrown up. Easy to spot. Okay. So now we spin the disc for Wing Ho, and here we go. Take a quick look, Wing Ho. What plane is that? Go a fucker, got me. No, 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 no. Guess wrong, Wing Ho. This is a Curtis SPC-4. I, I can see how you made that mistake. Both aircraft are biplanes. Both have staggered wings. You can tell one from the other by the nose. Well, Pat? <laughs> Wing Ho, you're lost out by a nose. So I'm going to make Wang my top sergeant. Is that all right with you? All right. You mean okay. Okay, boys, break it up. There's all the airplane spotting lesson you get today. Now, tomorrow, we'll have another session. And I want every man jack of you to identify at least 16 planes. This spotting card will be hung outside my door. You can study it. Okay, scatter. Get some sleep. It'll be nice to head when you can't get me shut out. Well, Pat, how did you like the spotter idea? It's slightly sensational, Terry. I've been giving it a lot of study myself. The boss ought to know all about planes, too, you know. What's your average? Can you identify a Lockheed Hudson from a Martin B-26? Or a Curtis P-40 from a Bell Aracobra? I never hope so. I've learned the different wing shapes and tail assemblies and... Uh... Listen, what's the alarm bell, Pat? Hey, there's a plane coming this way. Yeah, that's the signal. It's been spotted all right. Suppose it's Jude Henny coming back? Can't say. Let's get outside and see. Uh, we better keep out of sight until we can identify it. All right, back there, Tony. Is Oscar Stoki, Mr. Duda, for Humphrey? Well, I don't know whether I should have brought you back with me or not. He's fine for surprising you like everything. Well, uh, maybe so, but you're walking into trouble. I guess you know that, don't you? Uh, he's flying into difficulties. Well, the last time I flew out to the Samsung Hills, those commandos fired at me as I was getting ready to land. Couldn't tell one plane from another. I hope they don't try it again. It's nerve-wracking. Honey, keeping cross fingers. Yeah, but we'll need more than that if we run into trouble. Hey, you think you can operate that machine gun? Oh, Johnny Wobbles. Honey is not for use that station gun. Okay, I'll do it myself. Ah, uh-huh, unless I'm mistaken, there's an invader scouting plane down below. Hasn't seen us yet. Way about two miles to the south of us. That way, to my left. Yeah. It's had a car up by plane. All that stuff, too. Is it Vega plane see us? Did he come up from? I haven't spotted it yet. We're between him and the sun. He's looking for something flying that low. Yes, yes, of course. He's trying to locate the commando hideout. Sure, that's what. Well, we'll tell him and see what happens. I'll give him this gun if he gets fancy. Can you see the plane, Terry? No, not yet. Oh, that's one of the men. He says it's a friendly plane. Oh, the fellow seems to recognize the ship all right. He's waving. Right, the plane now, Pat. It's a two-seater biplane. No, no, it isn't a friendly plane. It's one of the invaders. It's a Taka Cola. Yeah, yeah, and the pilot's seen it. He's winging over. Now he's going to die. On his side. Come on. Well, it's just me. 
You didn't fire. What's the idea? Never fired a shot. And you climb again, and next time you let us have it. Maybe not, Pat. I just thought of something. Yeah? Well, it'd take more than one dilly little biplane to bomb this place. No, I'll bet that was a scout plane. Hey, I think you're right, Terry. It'll scoot back to its base and return with a dozen real bombers. Confound the luck we'll have to take to the hills. If only it hadn't spotted it. Yeah. If only we'd been able to identify it first. The place here is camouflage. Hey, listen. There's another plane. That that isn't the same one you can you can tell by the engine. Listen. Hey. Hey, what goes on up there? I'm going outside and take a look. Hold on to your teeth, Connie. You can't let that bird get away. Please. Connie is weak for one foot on ground, Mr. Zulu. Ah, cheer up. You're going to like this. This is just proof. Oh, stump soup is not good on stomach today. That Catacaba plane can't make more than 140 miles an hour. Ha! Last best, this crate of mine will run circles around it. Oh, yeah. Is there a battle with boom bullets? Yeah, uh, the pilot has seen us. He's going to make a run for us. Well, we'll have to stop him. He was working for the commando hideout, where Terry and Pat are. You run away. He's so good for us. Oh, no. no, a lot of bitterness. If he gets back to the home base, he'll bring back to me with our bombers. They'll make powder out of that place down there. Hold on, Tommy. We're going to give him both bells. See it, Pat? Good old Judy. Look. Look, he's going after that monkey. Yeah? I bet he gets him, too. Oh, sure. Dude, plane is much faster. Invader ship can't get away. Dude won't let him get any altitude. Yeah. Just as long as the Tadakawa doesn't escape. There's somebody in that ship with him. Who can do be bringing back here? We'll find out as soon as that invader plane is... Look! Get there! Hey, got it! Wow, what a strap! There it goes! There goes the biplane! This is one invader that won't get back to report on it! The inability to identify a plane might have cost our friends their lives. Luckily, Jude Hennick happened to be riding the sky lane and was able to dispose of the enemy. Can you imagine what Jude will say when he lands? Learn to spot a plane, he says. Don't risk your neck by guessing. I'll tell you more about all this in just a moment. When you ask your mother to get Libby's tomato juice, why don't you make this suggestion? Why don't you ask her to keep a can or two in the refrigerator all the time? Then you can just dip in whenever you feel like it, and you'll feel like it plenty often. It's so marvelously good. Libby's tomato juice is a wonderful between meal drink because it doesn't take away your appetite for regular meals. You like to take away your appetite for regular meals. You like to take away your appetite for going to be plant meals. You like all of Libby's food meals. You like to for the first grade on the body for the first grade on the body for the.